back. Real talk with Minister Jay Renee. So glad to see you. So glad you joined me wherever you are. Um, man, I mean, the topic we talk about here on Real Talk, and I know that it has probably been very untraditional for what you hear in the church or at least the, the in-depthness of the way we have gone into these topics. But there's a reason. There's a reason uh, why I did this, why I chose these topics. Topics like uh, personal apostasy, you know, that's turning away uh, from the Lord. We did that one. We have done grief. You know, when we lose someone or we lose something, a uh, sudden loss. Uh, and we've done a portion uh, and the seriousness and the effects of that. And we've done rape. We've done suicide and mostly embodied in the young people for LGBTQ. But I know that there are adults. Listen. I have heard so many horrid stories. Um, just, you know, I used to work in uh, the medical profession. I used to be, uh, uh, and, and where, you know, I had to hear people and hear their stories. And so I have, I have been pretty much touched uh, by things I've heard, things that I've personally experienced, um, things that God has brought me through. And, and so all these topics are very pertinent. And, and why do I say that? Because, so if I were to be honest, transparent, and let me tell you, I am one of those people who do what they call the Holy Ghost dance in church. Um, very, uh, I think the word for some people is charismatic, if you will. Uh, some people say apostolic, uh, you know, whatever. I enjoy the presence of the Lord. But sometimes we uh, get the idea that church is the only place that that belongs. Well, okay, we celebrate, we come together and we celebrate the Lord. But that's on Sunday and maybe on Wednesday. And now that we are doing this online, oh my goodness, like some of the bad habits we've accrued even doing that, like is our focus completely engaged on, on online um online services well probably but if we were going to be honest look at all the other things that you while you're watching it, some people may not even get up out of bed you know or they're just doing other things I, I think one time I was doing uh, you know there was a person zooming you know and they're drinking their coffee and you know half dressed like wow I just don't want to see this but hey you know we, we have a different kind of engagement. And ultimately, having all these topics brings out the reason why we need Jesus. You know, we, we have been uh, traumatized in so many different areas of our lives, and some of us, so young, we can't even remember, like, before the trauma. We, we can't remember what life was like before the trauma. And so, we carry this thing, let me tell you. So what has happened over the years, we have gotten adjusted to how to live with the traumas that we have been um, exposed to. And so what happens when we're used to that, we just continue on like there's nothing and we still need to be healed from those things. And the only person, the only person that can heal us is Jesus. I mean like the total complete healing. There are people or professionals that help us recognize that we need healing, right? And um, even as a seminary student, I, listen, um, wow, I think I have been walking as a believer for almost 30 years. I am in my last year of seminary. And I will tell you that in uh, attending classes and in some of my classes, there have been things that I have realized that I have pushed in a corner and left it, like never finding a connection with that. 
Well, bringing out these topics is what I wanted to do so that we could see, oh, man. Oh, man, I, I like, I have just been living with this. Like, I live a different way. The way I make decisions or the way I do things is really because of this. But I've been so used to it. You know, especially divorce. We think that because we're out of this relationship, it doesn't bother us anymore. But actually, how we live our life and what we do has been affected by divorce. And the only way that we can really see the, the honest to goodness or to trust God in the way that we need to trust God to get through is to see how much we really do need Jesus. And if we've been walking in this thing for 30 years. So I, I just want to say that I wanted to take this segment and say all of these things, these areas have affected us in some kind of way and it can be the hindrance of going forward past that that blockage that that hinders whatever some some of us are stuck why am I still well what do you believe about yourself what do you believe about yourself oh why we need Jesus because why you are a believer you renew your mind you renew your mind in the way so when we are born again uh oh I'm trying I'm trying to give you time get your Bibles, but I'm, I'm going to throw this out here anyway. When we are born again, we have been born into the spiritual. And so it is because of that that our life should be new or working that way. So uh, just like getting over uh, traumas or the different kind of traumas we've been through is a process, so is uh, seeing the, uh, the true effects of why we need Jesus. You know, we can come and we can play a mean instrument. Oh my goodness, worship is just magnetic and awesome when you get on the keyboard or when you're playing the bass or the guitar or the drums or whatever you are playing. But on the inside of you, you are so tormented from the trauma of your past. And what would worship look like when you are able and free to let go? And so here, the reasons why I brought all of these topics uh, to you, and listen, if you haven't even seen those segments, go back and visit them. Go back and, and visit the segments and, and see the statistics. See that you are not the only one. And as the body of Christ, we're together to be healed. And so we cannot keep hiding our trauma from, from ourselves, from ourselves, right? So God, so when it says God has hidden this, he hides things for you. The more we seek God, so in other words, what I'm trying to say is, we, if we only seek God on the weekend and halfway then, we're not getting the full capacity of who he is. And I want to just reach out and say, listen, there is much more and you are much greater than where you are right now. And so you, you, you can do fabulous things. You know what? But uh, what God has for you, oh my goodness, maybe man doesn't know it, but the Spirit of God wants to release it to you. And so, even though people, or we might feel like people might judge us, God does not. God knows who he has created you to be before he ever, or we used to say before he ever, before your grandma ever met your granddaddy. <laughs> he already knew who you were. And you are that special. And sometimes it is hard to see that you're special because of what you've been through and um, how people have treated you. Listen, people might treat you like garbage, but you are so special. You are so treasured 
by God that Jesus, Jesus said, yes, I'll go and I'll give my life. For what? For their life. So when we die with him, we raise with him. And it is new and we should be experiencing that to the fullest. But if you are still stuck somewhere, if you are still stuck in grief, you're still stuck in divorce. You know, people can make you feel like you are not worthy and it was your fault. Listen, the blame game is a part of sin. I, okay, so if we look at Adam and Eve, for instance, Adam and Eve, what happened? As soon as they sinned, it was the woman you gave me. Well, the demon told me, the, the beast said, it was the blame game. That's where the blame game entered in at. And so whenever you are in the middle of blame, know this, you are still in a mind or a mindset of, of sin. Oop. Oop. You know what? God is not blaming you or looking at you and saying, well, you shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done that. Or, you know, God is not doing that. Father, what do I need to do? Yes, there are some times we feel like, hey, I need to apologize. And you know what? The Lord has blessed me in those incidents, in, instances to see uh, those people. And guess what? I was like, hey, you know what? I always wanted to tell you this. I am so sorry for my behavior back then. You know what? As I, what I've learned and grown to know that, man, I shouldn't have done that. And even if they say, hey, you know what? Don't worry about it. Listen, it's more important to me that they hear my apology and how sincere I am to make that thing right as best as I can. And there's sometimes, you know what? I'll never be able to see those people again. But I am not going to carry guilt because it is a part of sin. Come on. Jesus has freed us from some things. But you know what? If you're going to still say, yes, I'm going to go to church and sing all the way up there, you know, I'm going to sing on the rafters, right? And I'm, you know, people bow down. I hit that note. <laughs> but you are still suffering from the trauma. This is why we need Jesus. We need Jesus to get past that trauma. Sometimes we don't want to because we feel guilty that we don't care or that it's signifying something else. I assure you that's not it. So... Um, I am going to go into this segment and, and say, hey, look, this is what Jesus really does, right? He makes us new. He makes us new. And I know I said part of that on last broadcast, but guess what? I'm going to show you how that it's, Jesus is not just for Wednesday, Sunday, Tuesday, Saturday, but he is to walk with, live with every single day, every single day. You know how good it feels to be able to talk to the Lord out loud and know that I ain't crazy because I ain't talking to myself? Right, <laughs> right. Jesus, he teaches us every day. He teaches us every day. We need his word every day. So guess what? Right after this break, while we're on this break, you grab your Bible, and we're going to take a trip to the Bible and see why we need our word and why we need to reinforce it. Be right back. Hello, my name is George Demery, and I'm your host for Your Money Matters. We promote financial literacy. We help you to find business and education opportunities. We champion strategic thinking of how you spend your money. We want to help you to become more credit worthy Look for ways of getting that credit number over 700. And finally, we want to help you to break away from financial slavery, debt. Join us each week right here or on demand at ssclivetv.com. SSC Live TV. Truth. Justice. Power. TV done our way. You got your stuff? Let's get to it. So you know what? Um, when Jesus comes, right, 
and he comes into our heart, right? And we, okay, let me just say this. When we receive him, we receive him. Please do not have the mindset of thinking that Jesus does not want you. I have seen so many people's faces. But they're like, yes, Jesus. They'll say his name, but their faces have this look that says they're not really sure that Jesus accepts them, right? And especially if you have uh, done something that you know is wrong, like the night before, or the, you, you, you struggle, you struggle, you struggle, you struggle. Oh my goodness. Oh, ah, I, just, I wanted to say so much right there, but I'm going to stay on track. I'm going to stay focused. So as believers, as believers, let me just say this. We are the temple of the living God, right? And, you know, everything changes. And so what people uh, struggle with is have friends who don't believe or who uh, do all these things, you have to make up in your mind. Lord, I want to live for you. I want to live for you. Right? And then there are some things that, listen, it bothers you. You might not say nothing, but it bothers you. Well, on the inside of you, it's like an unction, right? That says, I don't like this anymore. Uh, so I used to be a clubber, man. I used to club, like be in the club. And back in my day, it was uh, the NCO club, right? Or enlisted club because, again, uh, I have lived around the military community most of all of my life. A um, couple times, not so. But guess what? The drive wasn't too far. And so that was me. And I've, I've been to a couple clubs because, you know what? I did not drink or smoke, but I do love to dance. Or, well, I do kind of love to dance now, but I don't go to the club to dance. And so, um, I'll be in there, but you know what? Something happened on the inside of me when I started moving beyond that, like, ugh, it just wasn't interesting. It just wasn't. Then, you know, I got saved, and I found joy in, in Bible study. I found joy when I joined choir and being at choir rehearsal, I, those things actually gave me joy. Like, I was, it wasn't a religious thing, like I had to be there, but oh my gosh, I just wanted to be there. You know, I love it, I love it. I still love those things. I do. I love listening to music. I, I think there's not uh, a genre, like, of any kind of music, country, whatever, that is not, that does not sing the word of God. I enjoy that. Like, those are the new things, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't hard for me to let go of a lot of things, but there are some things that I struggled with, right? And those things were a process as coming out of. So, when we talk about uh, the temple of the living God, we're, I'm looking at 2 Corinthians 6 chapter, I'm going back up to the 14th verse, okay? And so it says, um, and I'm in the NRSV version. I like that version. I go through uh, different ones, you know, uh, New Living Translation, NIV, King James. I go through different versions, but I like coming back to the NRSV. So here I go. Do not be mismatched with unbelievers. For what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship is there between light and darkness? What agreement does Christ have with uh, Belial, that's what it's, but uh, Baal is what I think is in the King James Version. Or what does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. We are, we are. God lives in us now. His home is on the inside of us. And so, as God said, I will live in them and walk among them and will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch nothing unclean. Then I will welcome you, and, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You know what I love about the Holy Spirit? 
is that when we make a decision to walk away from them, listen, this is what I, this can I, I'm going to be honest with you, this is what I did. I said, um, okay, Holy Spirit, I need some help. Okay, I just want to make a clean break. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, right? But I just, I need a way out. I, I need a way out. So I learned that whatever I was afraid to do, I asked the Lord and he would bring some kind of division. And that happened, literally it happened. I, I wish I could tell you, and some of you have known me so long, you know how I used to be, like just connected, like just in there. And one day the Lord had to teach me, well, you made a choice to do this when you knew you were supposed to do this. So I was, so we had a choir fellowship and I made this dish but back then, I was at Kentucky State University, which is about an hour and some change from where I, uh, my church was. And so I said, well, Lord, if you help me out of this, I will never make that decision again. I will put you first. So there are some things that I encountered that I didn't realize that I was putting before the Lord. God is not mad. He will walk with us through this thing. And so we need him to even listen, God, I'm still suffering for this. And sometimes, you know, you can be impressed that the Lord will guide you on what to do to be safe, what path to take to steer away from danger. See, everybody, so if you look at God like he's this rule enforcer, oh, then it will be hard for you to want to live and walk with God. If you think that every time you mess up, He's there to punish you. Then it will be hard for you to, to let go and let God, if you will. If, in other words, to trust him to lead and guide you. And he's on the inside of you. He says, I will and in you. You know, so again, I think I said this one time, Lord, I want to live in you. So there's a trust that we build that brings us from the trauma from our past, right? So when you want to walk with God and you, say, you quit worrying about what you will lose because what you gain with Jesus is so much greater than what you will ever lose. This, I promise you. And you know what? And, and let me say this, even in the hard times, because things, people think, oh, well, God will keep me from this or keep me from that. And, Listen, you might go into some hard times, but Paul said in the scriptures, he said, I know what it's like to have much, and I know what it's like to live in little. But you know what? Blessed be the name of the Lord, because God never forsook him. So in other words, God always provided, whether it was in abundance or whether he had little, but God always kept him, right? And so we have to trust the Lord enough to say, you know what? I do let this go but it's the way we think about him. Do we think about him as a loving Lord and Savior who, by the way, has been tempted in every way known to man and has not sinned? He's the only way that can relate to what you've been through, the trauma you've been in, the trauma that you're still in, and knows how to bring you out because he can relate to that temptation. So I just... <laughs> Look, I, I got real passionate because I want you to know that we can't stay in this trauma when we've had a God that has died for every one of our sins, for every uncleanness. Listen, he's the God who cleans. He's, he cleans. Listen, he says he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth and all your tears will be wiped away. And listen, in this new place, everybody think, oh, we got to die. You know what? I don't know if we'll be in that generation when it comes down from the sky. <laughs> but what I do know, that if you are in Christ, you will live. You are only going to transition, baby. I, you are not going to die when you are in Christ and Christ is in you. But it, it takes to understand that God didn't, do all that trauma to you. God did not, uh, you, you know, that thing that you've been through, 
is because, listen, we live in a sin-sick world. And that is why we call the world. We can't have fellowship with unbelievers. And let me say it this way, because when you knew you think different, an unbeliever, man, I, I, can I just tell you how many unbelievers have tried to tell me how to live based on what they think they know? Are you kidding me? How can they know that when the one who teaches you is the Holy Spirit? How? What is it that they can tell you about the lifestyle you're supposed to live and they have no fellowship with God? God is not telling them. Listen, God can use anybody to tell you anything. But God is not going to use an unbeliever to teach you how to live a spiritual life. Somebody spiritually dead can't tell you how to spiritually live. You hear me? Somebody that has been through what you've been through but are new like you can help you. So why do we need Jesus? We need Jesus so that we can walk into the fullness of what he's given us to walk in. And guess what? We haven't even scraped the surface of how good God has made it for us. <laughs> Think about that. You are a new temple. And you say, you know what, God? So check this out. I thank you for quickening me. Quickening this mortal body. Help me to live a good life. Cleanse out my body. Lord, help me to eat right, to give strength to my body so that I can fulfill my purpose in you. Oh my goodness, so much he wants to do through you. So much he wants to do in you. And it is all good. It is all good. We need Jesus to live an everyday life of success. And if that success is overcoming anxiety, <laughs> then let it be that success. And tomorrow there may be a new success, right? To, to coming out of panic attacks. Come on, somebody. He is here to walk us through every step of success. You know, they're a billionaire. Really? Really? What will you do with it? Live in pleasure? Come on. We have a heart to give things back to God so that we can see greater than we've ever seen. Listen, God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think or ask in your life. But you have to know that he's not responsible for the evil that has been done to you, but he is the one that can wash you from that evil. Come on, we remember Job in grief. All these little pieces bring us in to this need for the Lord. Listen, listen, today, let go. Decide, you know what, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Help me, renew my mind. Renew my mind. So keep hearing the word of God. Keep reading the word of God. So as the Spirit teaches you, you know what, you're renewing your mind to think differently, to think rightly about God so that you can see the, the righteousness that is before you. And guess what? I will see you next time because I am out of time. This has been awesome. I thank you that you will join me on the next segment. I pray that you've enjoyed this one, and I'll see you next time. This is Minister Jay Renee on Real Talk. God bless you.